A lot of bad news on the horizon, just about for everyone, but large traditional enterprises can thrive in this environment, especially by looking across the aisle at tech startups that would love a partner. Let's find out how to take advantage of that. With the economy softening, interest rates going up, tech valuations going down, startups are going to have challenging next couple of years. Everyone's been talking about that. We actually see more activity from strategics uh, being a likely outcome rather than less. You know, again, in the fight against large tech monopolies, how do you fight back and win? We need traditional incumbents and tech startups to work together. The large tech monopolies generally have their hands tied where they would love to be doing tech M&A in a downturn because they still have more cash than they know what to do with, even if there's an, a downturn or not. Generally, they can't use M&A as a mechanism to, to, to really accelerate their growth, which is great news. So what that means is, as purely financial investors are more tepid to invest dollars, they kind of want to see where things sh shake out, right? Let the dust settle, but then by then it might be too late. Strategic buyers and strategic investors, like large traditional incumbents, can use this opportunity to really lean in and find some companies that have a great team, great capability, maybe some traction, but just not enough scale to get all the way to where they need to be on their own, um, you know, are looking at alternative ways to continue to grow and accelerate growth. And a strategic partner that brings more than just capital, brings scale, which is really what these tech startups need more than anything is scale, is now a very attractive, even more attractive, already was attractive, now, even more attractive thing for a prospective startup to entertain. And so back when COVID first hit, McKinsey came out with an interesting article looking at past downturns and what large companies have done, you know, as it relates to M&A. Now, this M&A analysis is really looking, not looking at specifically tech M&A, um, but that's really where, where my mind is coming from this. So, you know, they talk here saying, Pursue programmatic M&A through cycles. So basically saying, hey, you want to continue to have, if you can do um, more than two smaller mid-sized deals per year with meaningful total market cap acquired median of 15% that you can outperform. Whereas if you just are really doing like one massive deal, you're actually having a greater risk to underperform. And then they have here programmatic versus selective M&A. So doing less than two deals per year. And, and so it's kind of more one off or ad hoc. But they're saying, hey, if you have a, a kind of continuous M&A function and you keep that going in a downturn, then you can basically get better deals. That's kind of the bottom chart here in this article. Your valuation goes down and you, know, you can extract more synergies from it as a strategic buyer. And, you know, you've got an extra 15% of profit, whatever, in these bar charts that they put together. Okay. Point here is they look at what were the M&A themes and they surveyed a bunch of uh, companies and said, hey, here, look, you know, if you look at the blue, you know, these blue uh, COVID shocks, right, that, you know, it's causing companies to change or reassess how they think about M&A because of COVID makes sense. Now, we don't know how companies are necessarily changing, but here's what I would say is the real opportunity. We don't really touch on it in this article, but what you've seen, especially with COVID, is the channel disruption that can come from these new digital business models. And how can you leverage tech M&A or at the very least, you know, a strong tech partnership, maybe with your uh, a dominant but still minority investor. How can you leverage tech partnerships, tech M&A, bring your scale to the table, find some tech companies that just would have been way too expensive to buy in the past couple of years with all the Fed printing and asset price inflation that we had. But now you're seeing startups that are kind of coming to grips with this new reality. The founders are very passionate, purpose driven. They want to just get to where they want to get to and would be more than happy to look at partnering with a large 
strategic. Those deals are going to be coming much more fast and much more frequent. And the challenge there is if you don't have a good strategy to say, hey, what are we trying to buy just other businesses that look like ourselves? Great. You know, McKinsey's saying, yeah, you should keep doing that. Okay, cool. But what is the tech strategy? Where could a new digital business model actually be a complement, actually accelerate the grander ambitions of the traditional enterprise? You need to have that figured out now going into the next couple of years so that you know what to look for, right? Because if you just have things show up on your doorstep that look nice, but you don't really know, like, I don't know, is this, is this strategically what I should be doing? Am I actually going to capture all the synergies and strategic advantages that I need for my broader business strategy? You know, that's the work that you need to do now to lay the foundation to then have the market work for you. And that's what's going to happen. Already is starting to happen. It's only going to happen more and more and more as more and more data comes out about how bad things really are and how bad they're going to continue to get, which is what's going to happen. But for a large traditional you know, player, you can thrive in this environment. In the old days, the large tech monopolies would use these downturns to invest very aggressively. Like, what did you see right when COVID happened? You saw all the big tech monopolies say, hey, we're doubling down, we're investing in growth, like we're gonna really rip it. And what did they do? Look, their numbers were astronomical off the charts. That's what traditional players need to be doing. And this is the perfect time to get started. Go check out some of our other videos where we highlight client transactions, where the client is buying a smaller tech startup or investing in a smaller tech startup and, and engaging in these tech startup partnerships. Um, we've done that with Ford, we've done that with Dot Foods, we've done that with Massey Motors in the automotive industry. Uh, go check out some of those videos highlighting how we think about large traditional player and tech startup working together.